Good day, everyone. I am Mark, your fat friend. And I am James, your black friend. And this is the Fat and Black Connection. Connection. Where we talk about anything and everything. As long as it's interesting to us. Absolutely. And on today's show, we're going to be discussing different topics, including checking in on James with the COVID vaccination. We're going to be talking about uh, stimulus checks and getting some dollars. We're also going to be talking about uh, PC cancel culture and what's going on in our society today. And we're also going to talk about some uh, movies and shows that are interesting uh, to us. Yeah. And remember, this show is very interactive. So your participation is super important. Absolutely. Type your thoughts, your questions, your comments into that chat box, and we'll try to address as much as we can as we move along. Uh, as long as it's interesting to us, of course. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> so now let's go ahead and move on to the first topic, which is talking about the vaccine check-in. So it's it's been about one week, James. Uh, yes, sir. And uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but you got the Janssen, or also known as Johnson & Johnson shot, that which is, is a one and done. <clears throat> that is correct, sir. So when we when we last talked, you had just gotten the shot literally right. about an hour before we started broadcasting. Yep. How are you feeling? How are you doing? Oh, I, man, I'm good now. I am super good now. Uh, but I'll tell you, the day after, oh, oh your boy was hurting. Uh, I mean, not like not like it wasn't any nausea or anything like that. It was just like my, my entire upper body was like I felt like I did a, a room you know, like with the uh, the weights and everything. I, it felt like I hit a weight room super hard and hadn't recovered yet. But uh, I hopped in the shower a little bit later, and uh, so that kind of just loosened the muscles up and everything else. And then after that, I just had a little bit of a headache, but nothing that I couldn't manage. So, uh, yeah, but like I said, now I'm good, and everything is hunky-dory. Oh, wait, but I do have to make a correction from our first show. Okay. Uh, uh, that is, I, I had said I thought my mom was uh, at least got her first shot. That it was incorrect. That was incorrect. She hasn't got her shot yet. She's actually scheduled her shot, uh, and then also uh, her boyfriend. He actually got his shot. He actually ended up getting the Jansen as well. And so, uh, but, and he had zero side effects. And I asked my dad about the same thing. I asked my dad because I told you he is fully vaccinated. And he said that uh, he got the Moderna, I believe it was, and he also has zero side effects. So, Very good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so just a couple of quick interesting statistics. There are now over 29 million cases in just the U.S. Over 532,000 people have died. Jesus. Yeah. And uh, But, you know, the, the flip side is we are heading in a, in a really good direction. Uh, you know, we're, we're seeing... Uh, in California, 31,000 doses administered per 100,000 uh, people. So, All right, there you, you know, go. That's, that's good. Nevada's doing better, 33,000 uh, per 100. Yeah. Um, not as good as Arizona, though. Arizona's killing it with 36,000. Uh-huh. In Texas, they're, they're not so hot, 29,500. <laughs> so, uh, uh, it's, it's deep kind in the of, heart of Texas. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. We've, uh, you know, there have been over 109 million dollar, uh, 109 million vaccinations administered nationwide. Um, you know, obviously a lot of those are are first shots because you know Johnson Johnson or Janssen uh, just came out, and so um, you know what we have seen is that there have been 1.4 million people fully vaccinated via the Johnson and Johnson shot uh, already. So. Uh, we're heading in a good direction there. Pfizer and Moderna combined are just shy of 30 million people fully vaccinated. Um, so, so that's, so that's both, that's fully vaccinated. So both yeah, shots, both shots okay. have been administered now, kind of interesting. Uh, if you look at those numbers, but now you include people who have received just a first dose, we're over a hundred million people, people that have been given a dose. So, um, you know, as long as those people go back and get their second, we're heading in the right. right direction. So I did. I just uh, so you know, I did lose you for a second there. Okay. Yeah. Um, you know, a, a couple other of interesting things to talk about around COVID or the vaccine. Uh, so you, we're going to talk about the stimulus checks, but um, the bigger piece of that is that that was part of the one point nine trillion dollar American Rescue Plan Act that was right. just signed by uh, President Biden last week. Um, kind of disappointing though. 
5.2 billion out of that 1.9 trillion uh, is going towards uh, research and development for vaccines against COVID. That's literally three tenths of 1%. Hmm. Not a whole lot of money. And then uh, another 46 billion uh, is going to testing and tracing of COVID. So, uh, you know, a total of just over 50 billion out of 1.9 trillion. Um, I don't know if that's, uh, if we want to beat this thing and we want to keep it gone, especially with the different variants that we're hearing about. And here yeah. in Nevada, we just got uh, found out that there was the first uh, case here in Northern Nevada of the uh, British or English variant of of the COVID. So that's a little scary because that one is uh, evidently has a higher rate of infection. So, but yeah, but I heard it's uh, I, and I could be totally wrong about this, but I, I heard it is easier transmittable, but it's no worse. I mean, it's COVID's horrible uh, regardless, but it's no worse than the actual, um, the, the, strain that we have currently it's just a it's a variant that's transmittable um easier that's that's what i've heard okay. so um yeah it's not necessarily worse it's just easier to be transmitted so yeah um which leads us perfectly into the stimulus checks conversation so yeah no absolutely. You know, as we know joe biden uh, president biden signed the 1.9 trillion dollar american rescue act uh, Rescue Plan Act last week. Uh, and what that means for uh, a lot of people, including you and me, is $1,400 coming our way. Um, you know, that's that's not the 2000 that we were promised, but it is, it's a good amount of money. Um, you know, it's one shot. So uh, it, go ahead. Real quick, but isn't that uh, in addition to the 600 that was supposed to come out, that came out and then the fourteen hundred was supposed to make it the two thousand total. I mean, the six hundred was signed, sealed, delivered prior to you know the promises of two thousand more. So right. you know, oh, okay. we okay. we can say it's two thousand combined, I guess. But the original promise was two thousand. Right. Um, so I guess we got there. Um, <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, so $1,400 coming your way. Yeah. Uh, likely, you know, if you've done your taxes, did you already do your taxes for this year? No, not yet. I haven't done Oh, yet. yeah. You might want to get those done. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're, we're, we're a month out from uh, due date, so you might want to get there. Yeah. Um, but so if you haven't done your taxes, it might take you a little bit longer. On the last stimulus check, did you get a physical check? Did it, was it direct deposited? How'd that happen for you? So are we talking about the uh, one that ac the one that came out like last last the most year? recent the six hundred? Oh, I never actually I didn't even get the six hundred. Oh, what? Okay, what did you get last year? So i i got the I got the twelve hundred. Okay, that came out. I got that check in the first uh, round. I, yeah, I got that first round, and I got uh, that was direct deposited. I didn't. I didn't even see the 600. I heard people were getting it, uh, but I didn't see, I didn't get the 600. Yeah. Another reason to do your taxes, because if you didn't get it and you should have, uh, that, that could help take care of that problem for you. Um, yeah. So theoretically you're getting $1,400 at some point between now and, you know, mid April, theoretically. Uh, what do you plan to do with it? Uh, I'm just going to put it in. Uh, I'm going to hold on to it. And put it into one of my uh, into my uh, higher yielding account at the credit union I'm with. I, 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 I so you're not hurting. You don't necessarily need this. No, I don't. I don't super need it. It'd be it'd be super nice because then I can. I you know I basically make sure I have that that backup fund. Um, but I, I'm just gonna throw this out there. I, I have seen recently the past few days people buying. And I saw this with the with that the twelve hundred dollar check that came out last year. People buying TVs and and electronics and stuff, and I, it's not my money. It's not my money, and I and I understand that. But it, I, I, I don't know. I just find it a little bit irritating that. These people are going out and buying 
And I understand it's supposed to stimulate the economy. I get that. But buying TVs and electronics and stuff like that, it, I just don't, I don't think that's really what the check was for. So as you just said yourself, it's to stimulate the economy and what you're going to do and put it into a high interest yielding bank account. How is that stimulating the economy? Well, no, I, because see, I still use, I use the money that I, I get from my paychecks and I use that to, and then like when I, when I need to, I pull from that other account. See, so the whole point theoretically of these stimulus checks are to either a help those people that are really hurting or yeah. those people like you or myself that aren't, they're hoping that we'll go out and spend this money and buy something frivolous because oh, it, okay. it helps it helps that small business owner or it helps that large business owner. That's um, true. So, you know, ultimately you just sitting on a pile of $1,400, that, that doesn't stimulate the economy. Um, you know... Uh, for me, you know, I've got a wife and a kid, right? And so I'm getting $4,200. That's, right. that's a chunk of change, right? You know, yes, that's, that's, that's down payment on a car, right? Um, you know, I, I'm not going to use it in that way. Um, you know, right, right this minute, I couldn't tell you what I'm going to do with it. Um, you know, I, I'm looking at, do I want to invest it? Do I want to uh, buy some toys? Do I want to, you know, get my kids some things? Um, but, you know, ultimately, I, I don't need it just like you. Uh, and if there was a way to decline it, I would. And, and that's one of the things I think that's frustrating about it. You know, the, the other things that go along with the stimulus is there's also, um, you know, $300 uh, a week going to people that are unemployed uh, through September. So a lot of people's benefits were going to be running out this month. Um, yeah. And they weren't going to be able to collect unemployment anymore. At least this keeps some money going, um, you know. Uh, we, we've got a we've got a viewer out there who's asking the question. You know, do TV and electronic sellers not need to be stimulated, James? Um, you know, <laughs> that's, that's yeah, so. That's so true. no, yeah. I mean, you know, you're you're obviously entitled to your opinion, of course. Right, uh, right. But what does it bother you that you're seeing these people going out buying something frivolous like a TV? And that you're not doing that, or no, I, I, it just, um, I guess I was thinking more along the lines of, uh, and and again, they might be, they might be okay, they might, they totally might be okay, uh, and and if that, and that's the case, then cool. I'm glad you're able to, you're able to do that. I'm not, I didn't, I don't plan on buying a TV. I have a TV. I have all the toys and stuff that I really need right now, at least that I can, you know, I can manage right now. Um, so I mean, I mean, pretty that, much, that $1,400 covers a nice trip to like, I don't know, Disneyland. Right. And I can, and that's, you know, that's something that I can put, I could put to the side so that I can make sure that I can actually cover a trip like that. I can, I can, like I can cover those kind of things that I want to do. Yes. And so, but like I said, it's just when I see it, when I see it, especially like at the time, it kind of is just like, hmm, I don't know. Like, are you, bill, you know, are you, are you, are you good on your bills? Are you, are you, is your rent like up to date? All that kind of stuff. That's what I, I, I kind of think about. But you don't know these people. Right? That's true. Like I said, I do not know these people. So, I mean, I can't. I, so you're so judging I'm, ultimately I'm is what you're saying. Yes, I'm making a snap judgment. I, and, and so, yes, I'm guilty of that. So I'm that's why I ask a snap if it's a jealousy thing. Because, I mean, ultimately, what do you care? I, and that's the thing. I, I shouldn't. I don't. I, I mean, I, 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 I can't say I don't. I shouldn't. I shouldn't care. Because it's, it's like I said, it's on them at the end of the day. It's just one of those things when I just see it, I kind of like, ah, I don't know. Cause like I said, I don't, I don't need, I don't need a new TV. Like the TV that I have is perfectly fine. I sure, have, you're, you're, you're rocking a 55 inch uh, 3d TV from, you know, what? 2013. Uh, yeah. It, and, it works. It does what you need it to do. Right. Yeah. And I mean, I got, I have a, I have a PS4. I have games. I have, you know, I, so, and it, my PS4 can do most of the stuff, you know, I can you know, get, uh, 
Amazon, Hulu, uh, whatever, Netflix. I can do all that from from there. So, um, like right you're, now, you're a simple man. Need, just, yeah, you're a simple man with simple needs. Yeah, I just don't. I don't need. I don't need anything else right now. I mean, I'm of course like I'm gonna want like you know I would like to get another TV in the future, but I just don't need anything like that right now. Sure. So a couple yeah. of uh, other interesting things coming out of the stimulus is that uh, there's 128.6 billion going towards public schools. Cool. That's that's not a lot. Out of 1.9 trillion dollars. Right, I understand that. The goal, the goal is supposed to be to get schools reopened. But the thing is, is that it, weren't they saying that that's actually supposed to? They're saying that there's. Uh, I know there was an argument that this is more money than the schools can actually handle right now, and yep. that they won't be able to use it. Yep. But they're looking at long term with it. Yeah. So evidently, uh, there's. Uh, you know, they're saying probably by the end of the federal fiscal year, which is, I believe, September, October, uh, probably only six billion will be used uh, of the hundred and twenty eight billion. Um, so why did we pass a bill for that much money if it's not going to actually be used in a timely manner? Well, I heard it was to keep uh, to, to try and avoid the layoffs, all that kind of stuff, because from uh like so, the teachers and they didn't have to try and high and being able to hire more janitors to make sure they can clean and and uh, do a, a thorough cleaning stuff like that. I I mean I hope you're right. Um, you um, know that that goes back to our conversation last week of talking about Disneyland and doing cleaning. You know, uh, in the schools in public schools, if they reopen, are they going to have to be cleaned deep cleaned every single night by janitors? Are they going to have to go through there with like you know cans of bleach and Lysol and you know, with that, I, you know, like when we were talking about that, I, I think it'll probably end up being a lot easier than that. I think it'll be more like they'll be able to be filled. Literally, they'll wow, rewind, start over. Uh, they'll probably be able to spray it mm -hmm. and just kind of just keep and just spray and walk for most of the cleaning stuff, and then uh, probably just have and then let it dry. And maybe somebody comes through and, and just make sure it's wiped, you know, if there's no residue or anything from it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, additionally, there's uh, an increased child tax credit, uh, which goes from $2,000 up to $3,600. So for me, for example, uh, you know, this, this year we've already filed our taxes and, you know, we're getting a return. If this had gone through before and was effective now, I'd have gotten an extra sixteen hundred dollars back. That's uh, that's no small chunk of change either. No doubt, no but, doubt. So ultimately, what we're doing is we're incentivizing having children. Yeah, I heard there was something. Uh, I heard there was something about like the <laughs> people weren't having babies recently. <laughs> well, yeah, you got to take advantage, right? I mean, you know, you're a single guy. Um, yeah. you're missing out on these tax opportunities, tax credit opportunities. Yeah. But at the same time, I'm not just gonna, I'm not just gonna jump out there and have a kid just so I can, you know, get, get some extra money off of it. I want to make sure that I'm with somebody that I truly love and care about before I end up doing something like that. Well, that's the first step, right? You need to find someone, right? <laughs> yeah, that is, that is absolutely the first step. <laughs> that's right, ladies. He is single. So. <laughs> oh, wait. He is uh, some kind of catch, let me tell you. Uh, <laughs> Something. Additionally, there's $350 billion that's going to state and local governments. So, for example, I, as you know, I'm a government worker. Um, yes, sir. And, uh, you know, there have been uh, times that I have been able to take time off of work uh, due to being sick or my child being sick. Um, and ultimately, we were able to... Uh, Get, get paid uh, for not working. Um, you know, for an example as well, you know, recently getting the COVID shot. Um, you know, I, I was not feeling well at all the couple days after and I took a couple hours off each day because I just, I wasn't feeling it. And I got paid. I didn't have to use um, my personal leave. Uh, yeah, I was able to use a, I used a sick day, uh, like I said, the day after just because it was... <laughs> It was not going to work. So did you have to use a personal sick day or did your company pay you 
Oh, that, oh, I, oh, sorry. I guess you got paid to say uh, me. I actually just had to take a sick day. Yeah. See, that's government. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I think, you know, now is a really good time for us to transition a little bit um, and, and pivot, if you will. Uh, pivot. Pivot. Yeah, pivot. Pivot. <laughs> pivot. And let's 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 move over to our topic that uh, was really brought up by you. Uh, there were a couple of things that uh, you addressed that it sounded like you wanted to talk about uh, around uh, the cancel culture or PC culture um, that that we're really experiencing today. And um, let let's move into that conversation. Yeah, absolutely. So first and foremost, let let's talk about Dr. Seuss. Yeah. Let's so, talk about yeah. So uh, as we know, uh, recently, um, Dr. Seuss uh, had uh, how you say some books canceled. Um, six books, where evidently there are images that people find offensive or degrading, and so. Uh, and remember, I thought, but remember, this was the company's decision. This yes, wasn't... the company that publishes Dr. Yeah, Seuss's this was, this library. Wasn't... This wasn't anything, there was no political, anything behind it. It was the company's decision to pull the, the, like these six books. So you're telling me that you think the company didn't receive any pressure from any outside sources or groups. You think it was a pure decision they made on their own. I, they might've had, they might've had some, but I don't think, I think, you know, these, some of the books they were talking about were published uh, earlier. Like they're some of the earlier books from what I understand. And so like, the image some of the imagery and things like that um so people consider it offensive so you know so for those of you watching right now uh you know for the benefit of those that actually enjoy the live broadcast you'll see i've brought up on the screen uh one of the images from mcelegate's pool um which is one of the books that was canceled and um this ultimately depicts some Eskimo fish, I believe, swimming towards McElligot's pool. Um, I guess it's offensive to Inuits. Yeah. I, I don't know. I, I don't know about this one. Um, it doesn't look horrible, but again, there are Inuits, of course, that might find this very offensive. And so I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. So in this next image, this is uh, from, uh, it's a long title, but it's ultimately Mulberry Street. And uh, in the image, in the bottom left-hand corner, there, there is a gentleman uh, who clearly does appear to be in a stereotypical uh, Chinese outfit with chopsticks and what appears to be a bowl of rice. And he's running and the line below it says a Chinese man who eats with sticks. So uh, offensive, perhaps uh, stereotype stereotyping. Absolutely. Absolutely that. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, canceling a book, a whole book because of it. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, maybe. Uh, this next one, this is an image of what appears to be a Middle Eastern, uh, I'm guessing, gentleman riding on uh, a Seuss animal that appears to be similar to a camel. Yeah. Um, this is from On Beyond Zebra. We also have uh, this one I find to probably be the worst. Uh, well, one of the two worst. Uh, this, this is from... Uh, you know, if I ran the zoo and uh, there, there's some imagery that is kind of disconcerting, but what's more disconcerting is the lines in the book. So it says, I'll hunt in the mountains of Zumba Matant with helpers who all wear their eyes at a slant. Yeah. That, yeah. that I think. Yeah. That's, that's tough. Yeah. That, that that's one, really tough. that one's a little rough there. Um, this one, I also, I, I think it is pretty bad. This is also from If I Ran the Zoo. Um, and it, it clearly depicts uh, some individuals 
that are walking, uh, carrying a, a bird. The line says, I'll go to the African island of Yurka and bring back a tizzle topped turfed mazurka. Mm -hmm. And the, the imagery of the, uh, I, I assume, Africans that are carrying this bird. Um, James, I'll let you address your black. <sighs> Uh, yeah, that's just that. That's a whole big long uh, stereotype. I mean, that goes back to blackface and and the uh, the, the the dolls that the the depiction of black characters throughout early American history. So, for you personally, is this you know offensive? Uh, that's this one. This one is this one's pushing it. This one's really <laughs> this one. I, I this is one of those books that I'd never seen. Um, and so uh, to, and I agree to be clear, I had never heard of any one of these six books. I had to re do research here. I I've, right. got a, I've got a ton of Seuss books. I've got a kid, right? I've got a ton of Seuss books. None of these six. Yeah, no, I, like I said, I've, uh, the books that they brought up, I was like, hmm, I never heard of these. And so, but like th this one, this one is really tough for me. I mean, that is, that's, that's a hard image to kind of look at. So I got to ask you though, because you made the comment a little bit ago when we were looking at the Eskimo fish or Inuit fish, and you didn't necessarily think it could be found offensive, but maybe that's because it didn't strike a chord with you personally. Right. Exactly. That's why I said there, that. That's why I also added there might be some uh, Inuit people that find that offensive. So, like again, that's something that you know. This last one is from uh, Seuss's scrambled uh, egg super, and uh, again, a depiction of what appears to be Eskimos or Inuits um, that are collecting eggs directly from. Uh, birds behinds um you know again for me personally i i think aside from it being a little gross i i don't necessarily i don't necessarily see it but again i'm not i'm not native american i'm not you know yeah and that's the thing it might have been a it might have been one of those groups that saw this and found it offensive and therefore they that again like we, we you were saying was there any pressure and while I don't think it was any, uh, I think there might've been pressure from some of these activist groups that were like, hey, this is not okay. Yeah, I, I don't know. You know, it's interesting though, uh, just, you know, again, so to name off the six books we've got, and to think I saw it on Mulberry Street, If I Ran the Zoo, McGilligot's Pool, On Beyond Zebra, Scrambled Egg Super, and The Cat's Quizzer. Um, and just from a timeline standpoint, the most recent book is from 1976. To think I saw it on Mel Mulberry Street is from 1937. This is in no way me trying to defend the depictions or anything. Right. Uh, I, I think one of the problems that I have and that we'll be discussing throughout the, the course of this conversation in general is how much do we go back in time to hold people accountable for things that they did at a point in time? Um, you know, I'm not in any way, like I said, defending these depictions or anything like that. I'm just simply saying it was a different time. And, right. um, you know, as we'll get to when we talk about some of the Disney things, um, you know, they say uh, in one of their, um, blurbs about, you know, the Muppet Show, for example, is, you know, this program includes negative depictions or mistreatment of people or cultures. These stereotypes were wrong then and are wrong now. Um, and yeah, if we look back through through the lens of time, we could say they were wrong then. But the people who were living then during that time, was that wrong to them then? And And I think that's the piece that gets missed a little bit mm -hmm. um so i don't know the so a couple of really interesting things about these books um you know the company uh that that 
was publishing them and has since stopped. Uh, the quote that they said is that these books portray people in ways that are hurtful and wrong. Ceasing sales of these books is only part of our commitment and our broader plan to ensure Dr. Seuss's Enterprises catalog represents and supports all communities and families. Well, actually, I don't know if you saw this comment down here, um, which is very true. What uh, uh, Marcy says, it's also important for people to realize the way things were rather than to pretend they didn't exist. And so right. that is, that's and a very good point. Absolutely. You know, one of the things we are going to be talking about throughout this conversation is, is Dumbo. And yeah. there, there was originally a plan uh, to cut parts of that film, which we'll discuss in a little bit. Um, and rather than do that, Disney has left it in place with, you know, that caveat at the front end. Um, and, and that's the right way, I think, to go about it. These things yeah. happened. Uh, these people existed. Going around tearing down statues or monuments or whatever, you know, to one extent, we should want to keep them. We should want to remember where we came from so that we never forget some of the mistakes we made so that we don't ever make them again. Because history is bound to repeat itself. If you forget where you came from, you will definitely, you, you are, there's, there's no reason that they won't repeat, it, repeat yeah, itself. Exactly. And, you know, one of our viewers just confirmed that. Yeah. If you forget history, <laughs> it is bound to repeat itself. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but I will say, for those people that do own one of these six books, um, eBay has tried to ban the sale of these books, but for the ones that are getting through, they're averaging about $500 a piece. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's so, crazy. So if you happen to own one of these six books, you, you, you might be able to uh, make a pretty penny if you decide you want to sell one. Uh, I will say also, though, that Dr. Seuss's stepdaughter did come out herself and say, and I'm quoting, there wasn't a racist bone in that man's body. He was so acutely aware of the world around him and cared so much. Well, then that, that shows you that, um, that gives you a different insight. Gives you definitely a different insight. Yeah. So let's, let's move on to a, another one yeah. um, that, that you brought up and I'm not entirely sure why you wanted to talk about this one. So uh, I'm going to open it up for you, but let's talk about uh, Mr. Potato Head invented and oh. introduced in 1949, distributed by Hasbro starting in 1952 um, sold over a million units in its first year, which therefore forced the introduction of Mrs. Potato Head in 1953. Now bear in mind when you bought the original Potato Head, Mr. or Mrs., it was just the parts. You had to provide your own potato. Oh, that's right. Yes, yes. That's so, right. So why did you want to talk about Mr. Potato Head? I'm a little confused here. Oh, no, it was just one of those things that it's it's come up. So it's been it was all on all over the news the uh, the last week. And so I wanted to touch on it now because everything's kind of dying down about it. So I just wanted to kind of get your thoughts on the whole deal. I mean, I knew I was kind of like, what? They're just taking the mister off. I, I don't know. So, OK, so I, I want to. As much as is possible for whatever we do with this show, I always want to make sure that we provide accuracy. And something that is be, has been reported numerous times is that Mr. Slash Mrs. Potato Head is going away. That that there, you know, I've heard, I've even seen a report where they're saying that you know you'll buy one and all the parts will be in there so you can mix and match. And no, none of this is true. So all that has happened, and I'm going to go ahead and share an image of what the current uh, box now looks like. Um, they just rebranded all, it. They just rebranded it. So yeah. Mr. Potato Head is still Mr. Potato Head. Mrs. Potato Head is still Mrs. Potato Head. Uh, it used to be the branding for the line of toys was the Mr. Potato Head line of toys. So right. all they've done is drop the Mr. Because there are more Potato Head. There, there's Mr. Mrs. There's, you know... Uh, the tots I think is what they're called where it's a bunch of kid potato heads and <laughs> yeah. So uh, that would have been funny in toy story. Yeah. So, you know, ultimately um, I'm not sure what you had heard, but Mr. Potato head is still Mr. Potato head. That is not changing. It's just the branding of the line of toys is changing from Mr. Potato head to potato head yeah 
no, so no I was one's... just I was just I was just interested to see what your thoughts about it were because like I knew I was just kind of like okay they're dropping them they're dropping the surname before I yeah you know I guess still a cool toy to me. I always I I kind of liked Mr. Potato Head when I was a kid or what yeah. Potato Head now well and like I said I think I get it you know it was. Mr. Potato Head brand of toys, line of toys, because he was the original. Right. Um, you know, a couple of interesting facts about Mr. Potato Head. In 1987, or, or prior to 1987, Mr. Potato Head came with a pipe. So oh, in 1987, really? they got rid of the pipe. So, you know, that was to go along with where we were in our times of recognizing that smoking was bad, right. and let's not perpetuate that. So uh, it's this what's happening now is not the first time that potato head has changed. Right. Right. Um, the potato head pieces, uh, they used to be literally like little sharp pieces. So you could jam them into a potato. <laughs> a potato. So they had to change that. Right. Uh, yeah, they, that's why they, they gave you the, the plastic potato with the, you could, and then you didn't have to worry about losing parts cause you could throw it in the, in the butt of the potato. Exactly. You know, uh, in 95, Mr. Potato head, guess where he, we found him. Toy Story. Sure. Yeah. 2000, he was inducted into the National Toy Hall of Fame. To be clear, Mr. Potato Head was, not Mrs. Um, <laughs> not <I know>. okay. <laughs> uh, so, you know. You know we, Jim says safety. <laughs> just, just to read a couple of the comments that we've got out there. Uh, you know, Potato Head was the first transgender toy. If you have any Potato Head parts, you mix them. You always did. Yeah, um, very true. You know, uh, th there is a certain degree of truth with that, right? You know, if you bought, if you had a Mr. and Mrs., you could interchange the pieces. It wasn't like Mr. could only have Mr. and Mrs. could only have Mrs. Um, and, and actually, you know, I'm thinking back and I'm like, oh, yeah, I can remember putting a mustache with, you know, the long lash eyes and stuff, you know, because it was. Yeah, funny. I think we all did that just to play around with it. Yeah. Um, you know, a, a great question, though. Why are we changing? Just to change? Uh, I don't know. You know, uh, I think that uh, we change as we as the times change. I think that, again, rebranding the line of toys, I don't think is necessarily inappropriate because, uh, as mentioned, there there are other potato head toys that are not even Mr. or Mrs. So just having the line of toys as... Um, Potato, potato head. head. I, I don't think it's wrong. I and you know every every brand out there needs to reinvent itself from time to time. Yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, we could definitely have a different conversation where we include things like Aunt Jemima or Uncle Ben, but we're not going to go down that path today. Not today. Um. <laughs> you know. So um, the next one that uh, I had on the list was uh, Pepe Le Pew. Um, you, you know what's funny about that? I remember uh, uh, Dave Chappelle actually did uh, a thing about Pepe Le Pew. And I, where I have this. I have actually in part of my show notes, I have in 2000. Go yeah. Ahead. And it was, and it was like he, the way he was talking about it, he was like, he was just kind of thinking about it as Pepe Le Pew. And then he was talking to his, his, uh, I think he ends up talking to his nephew or something. And his nephew makes a, you know, a, a Dave Chappelle comment that I won't say here. Uh, but it's like, oh yeah, wow. Pepe Le Pew was he was really grabby. You know, in two thousand, was... Dave Chappelle flatly said, "Pepe Le Pew is a racist." A racist? No, I don't think he said racist. Oh, I I typed it out wrong. Rapist. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I was like, racist? No, oh, it wasn't yeah. racist. No, but I mean, no, he was definitely, that was definitely unwanted touching so, for sure. So I'm going to flip the script a little bit on you, and I want to point out a couple of interesting things. So uh, Pepe Le Pew uh, originated in 1945, so right at the end of uh, World War II. Yeah, yeah. Um, as we know, he is a striped skunk that's always on the quest for love. Um, yeah. However, one of his first shorts in 1949 for sentimental reasons uh, <laughs> won the Academy Award for Best Short. Really? Um, yeah. So uh, should they go back and pull that award? Um, additionally, and this I think is more interesting. Um, so do you know the name of the cat that he's usually going after? Uh, 
That's something I don't know, actually. Well, she originally was just known as the cat, but has, since then has uh, been named Penelope Pussycat. Um, and there are at least three, three of the 18 uh, Pepe Le Pew shorts. There have been three where it's role reversal. She is chasing after him aggressively. That's crazy because I've actually never seen those. I'll bet you have. You're just not recalling them because when's the last time you actually watched a Pepe Le Pew cartoon? It's been a while. I mean, regardless. But, like, I remember I, – I just don't remember the ones where he's being chased. So, ultimately, my point being, is, as we know, Pepe Le Pew is basically being canceled by our, our society today because he uh, – uh, and I'm quoting here, uh, he is criticized for normalizing rape culture and perpetuating French stereotypes. His actions are sexual harassment, stalking, and abuse. Um, but what about Penelope Pussycat? Because as I said, in at least three cartoons out of the original 18 Pepe Le Pew cartoons, mm -hmm. she's going after him. Additionally, additionally, she perpetuates French stereotypes. She is always saying, les meow, les purr. Okay. That's that's very true as well. Okay. And even as recently as 2009, there was an AT&T commercial where Penelope is chasing Pepe Le Pew. Really? Yeah. Do your research, folks. Go watch go watch YouTube. I'm sure it's out there, but <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I like Pepe Le Pew is one of those things like I didn't I mean, I guess I never really had a pro I never really had a problem with him and then like I heard that and I was, it wasn't that I had a problem with it. I was like, Oh, that's kind of funny that, you know, that that's, yeah, he kind of, he was, he was a grabby dude. But again, so we're looking through the lens of time, right? And, and in 1945, you know, through 1950 ish, when, you know, his 18 original shorts came out, um, again, not defending, not saying that those actions are appropriate by any means. But looking through the lens of time, if you lived in that time frame, you know, these cartoons very often played in movie theaters before a film. I highly doubt people were sitting in these theaters feeling uncomfortable watching a cartoon skunk chasing a cartoon cat that he's romantically interested in. Um, yeah. You know, calling him a straight up, Dave Chappelle calling him a rapist. I think that's a little bit of a, a stretch. Um, yeah, I, I think he was, I think he was, he was going he was kind of going for the the i don't think he was taking it all seriously um but it was just it, it, the way when he, when he, when he, the way he said it was kind of like oh it made you think about it, it's like oh yeah he kind of was he kind of did that kind of stuff and, and you know think this is how quickly things change just to be clear as recently as 2010, Mike Myers was in talks to voice Pepe Le Pew for a full-length live-action film based on Pepe Le Pew. And in 2016, at San Diego Comic-Con, the WB introduced a writer for said film. Uh, obviously, we haven't had anything since then, yeah. but that's five years ago. Five years ago, WB was still planning, Warner Brothers was still planning on making a live-action, full-length feature film around Pepe Le Pew. You know, it's funny. That's also interesting because he was never really a character that I was like, oh, yeah, I'd go see a movie about him. Like, like I liked his cartoons. Don't get me wrong. I, I, I liked them, but it was just like, like, as far as a movie goes, like, I didn't hear, like, that's, this is the first I'm even hearing about the, this live action film, possibly. But, like, I don't, I don't know if Pepe Le Pew is one of those characters. I'd be like, yeah, let me, like, if he's in, like, he was in Space Jam for, mm -hmm. like, the first Space Briefly. Jam. Briefly, yeah, like real quick. But you know that that's kind of what I expect from Pepe Le Pew. Like I don't expect like a full. I wouldn't expect like a full length film. Like you know, however long his cartoons were, like five minutes max. That's that's about what I I would I would think. So ultimately, Pepe Le Pew being canceled. He's, uh, as far as it would seem, we're not going to probably see him around anymore. He's been taken out of uh, Space Jam 2, which is expected to come out sometime next year. They also take out Speedy Gonzalez. Uh, well, that's the next one. They've tried to take Speedy Gonzalez down before, and it sounds like they're trying to head in that direction again. Yeah, because I know, like, they, they um, actually, in the last uh, Looney Tunes cartoon, 
uh, Speedy Gonzalez actually had he owned man that, that dude owned like a number of restaurants, which I thought was like that was dope. But it wasn't, and it was none of them were Mexican restaurants. They were like pizza places and stuff like that, pizza, burgers, things like that. So I was like, oh, that's cool. And like, and I mean, I could understand why that would that could be like a a, a stereotype with the accent and everything else. But it, especially on the last the last few cartoons that I saw him in, dude was doing putting in super work. All right, let's shift gears over to Disney Plus, where we now have the Muppet Show. Uh, the Muppet Show was created, produced by Jim Henson for ABC in 7475, did a couple specials, Woo-hoo! then moved to uh, the UK uh, and was syndicated through CBS from 76 to 81, won multiple Emmy Awards, uh, won a Grammy, um, dozens of headline A-list uh, special guest stars. However, yeah. what you will see now at the top of uh, multiple episodes of The Muppet Show this program includes negative depictions and or mistreatment of people or cultures. These stereotypes were wrong then and are wrong now. Rather than remove this content, we want to acknowledge its harmful impact, learn from it, and spark conversation to create a more inclusive future together. So, okay you know, this, this was one you wanted to talk about. Um, yeah, I mean, I, that's the thing. I, I'm just a, I'm a huge fan of the Muppets, regardless. I, I've, I've liked the Muppets since I was a kid. Uh, I have seen every movie. Um, I own most of them. Um, I uh, I've always enjoyed them. Just uh, just from it's, it makes me feel like a kid. I love I I've oh I've loved Muppet Babies. I've lo- <laughs> uh, which I've always wanted to talk to the Muppets. Hey. Uh, why was there had never been any Skeeter in the actual Muppets? I guess she's on Muppet Babies, but that was it. Um, <laughs> um, but, Where we get the term uh, "skeet skeet" from? <laughs> that, uh, uh, no, okay, no, we'll okay. go with. Yeah, I don't know about that, but but like I said, like I I've always loved the Muppets, and like even the, and I understand. I definitely understood. Like I understand. Um, maybe why, why they put it on there. I mean, I've, like I said, I've always enjoyed them regardless. I mean, so a couple of the reasons that I found for the episodes that have them. So one episode evidently has an individual, uh, impersonating a Romani person. Uh, another episode, uh, they do impressions, uh, depicting multiple cultures in a rendition rendition of it's a small world. And, uh, in an episode with Johnny Cash performing in front of a barn, there was a Confederate flag on said barn. So, you know, again, I don't know. Yeah. Again, through, know. through the lens of time in the, in yeah. the, in the late seventies or early eighties, um, you know, again, I'm not saying that the Confederate flag and the people who carried it back in the 1850s, um, their reasoning, um, you know, I'm not defending that, but again, purely that flag being there now is why we have this warning at the top of that episode. Mm. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, well, if you think about it just recently, I mean, just until the last few years, the Confederate flag was in multiple states or was multiple states flag in, in, in or parts, parts, parts of, the of their flag. And that just, that recently just changed. Yeah. Yeah. And so, I mean, because of the, the, of the hateful Nate, well, the hateful nature of what it depicted. So, but, but in the, but like I said, I've always liked the Muppets. And so for me, like throwing a little disclaimer up there at the beginning, I'm okay with that. And, and actually that's going to take us, I think that's what our next, our next topic is, is, uh, is Dumbo. Yes. I was thinking about this yesterday and I, this this is hard because I understand I understand the horrible nature of the Jim Crow laws, and I understand that's what the crows in that movie depict. Hold on, but, hold on. More specifically, the lead crow, voiced by Cliff Edwards, the character is named Jim Crow. Jim, yeah, right. I understand that. I absolutely understand. And now, and now this hold is, on. Th- this is, is a that new I, thing that I, I now understand because I didn't, I, when I was a kid, I didn't get it. 
Well, and I want to ask this question, though. So Leonard Maltin is quoted in 1973 as saying, the crows are undeniably black, but they are black characters, not black stereotypes. There is right. no, de- there is no degre- de- de- degrading den- denigrating dialogue or Uncle Tomism in the scene. And no. if offense is to be taken in hearing blacks call each other brother, then the viewer is merely sensitive to accuracy. Right. And so like, that's the thing is that I didn't understand the crows. I didn't understand the crows. I didn't understand the Jim Crow. Again, I saw, I didn't see, I saw Dumbo when I was little and I didn't understand all that. All I knew was that it was about this, this elephant that could fly. And I, I was a little hurt by the kids making fun of Dumbo at the beginning, you know, and stuff like that, that, that did kind of hurt my feelings as a kid. But, um, and then, but honestly, I, oh my God, I absolutely love that song. So when, when I see an elephant fly, it is, that is like one of my favorite Disney songs of all time. I love that song. So in Whoopi Gold, in 2017, Whoopi Goldberg, uh, she, she was trying to push Disney to merchandise the crows more, saying, because the crows sing the song in Dumbo that everyone remembers. Yeah, that is the, that's probably the one song that everybody remembers from that movie. I mean, why, why, why would we want to shut that down? Because there was a period of time where they were talking about cutting that out of the movie. Oh, it's no, already I, short. I don't know if you know this, but Dumbo is literally like an It's one of the long. shortest movies. Yeah, you know, it's, it's super short. Yeah. And there is no reason. I mean, I, I don't think there, I mean, absolutely. They are, like, I don't like the name. I don't like the name. <laughs> um, and, and to understand, Jim Crow was a horrible time in our history. Uh along with the, the i mean there's so much bad history but again it goes back to to, to deny that is to repeat it so for me i i love dumb okay again dumbo is not one of my favorite movies i'm not i'm not like huge on dumbo but but that one song is probably one of my favorite songs by by far so again, through the lens of time, it was released in 1941. In 2011, yeah. it was called one of the 25 all-time best animated films. It also won the Academy Award in 1941 for best score. So, you know, last thing I'll say on it is in 2019, Floyd Norman, who Disney fans will know, was the first black uh, animator for Disney, um, who was hired back in the 50s. Um, He defended the crows in an article that he wrote in 2019 titled black crows and other PC nonsense. Go read the article. It's, it's an interesting read. Um, You know, wrapping up this conversation, this piece of the conversation, I think, you know, we did stupid stuff. It's not just America. It's not just, you know, we, we can look across the world through the lens of time uh, at any society and see that, we wouldn't do things today the way that we did them then. And I think that's important because hopefully that means we're learning from the things we did wrong, but to erase the things we did wrong again, we're going to, we're going to do them again if we don't know that we did that already. Yeah. I think, I I mean, honestly to, um, to kind of go back just real quick, just to kind of recap everything. I, I, I understand. I understand why people might be offended, but again, to erase them some of these things are just are 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 classics and don't need to be that do we really need to mess with them i mean yeah throw a disclaimer at it and but leave it alone you know uh, one of our viewers uh great point have you ever seen song of the south have you ever actually seen song of the south i have have you i believe i have you know uh, and i agree with what the viewer is saying it's a sweet pretty uh, innocuous movie. It it really is. It it's beautiful. I mean, uh, the music, the imagery, the art. Yeah, yeah I mean, it, it it's. I get I that. Of, I get that what it represents because it represents you know a time where there was slavery. You know, it could that was a, that it was happened. the south. It happened. <laughs> it, it it existed. These that was the south. Yeah. I honestly, honestly, that's one of those movies that I really want. I would, 
I, I know some people might be like not okay with it, but I would, I would love to see that actually out. Cause it's been, I mean, forever since, I mean, I know I, I've seen some of it, if not all of it, but I would, I mean, when we went to, uh, we went to the uh, Walt Disney Family Museum in San Francisco and just to see some of the art and, and stuff like that from that film, it was just like, oh man, they need to release this again somehow. I mean. Well, and we'll talk about this at some point in the future, I'm sure. But as you know, they are rebranding Splash Mountain and basically wiping that away from there. So, um, you know, what little pieces of Song of the South do still remain will be gone in the very near future. Um, but mm. yeah, it it is what it is. And um, let's move into our final topic for today. Uh, we're going to do a little speedy through this section. Um, we yeah. want to talk about some oh, yeah. shows wow. or movies that uh, we're watching or looking forward to. So uh, first up, let's, uh, let's give you the honors and let's talk about One Night in Miami. <laughs> yes. One Night in Miami is, the, uh, is, is a, uh, it's a real event that happened between uh, Cassius Clay, uh, a.k.a. Muhammad Ali, before he was Muhammad Ali, um, Malcolm X, and then uh, Sam Cooke and NFL uh, great Jim Brown. Uh, they there was actually this event that happened uh, in a Miami hotel after one of Cassius Clay's fights. Now, there's not a whole lot of information out there about it. The only thing that is out there is, uh, and I got this from my mother, of course. She said that Jim Brown uh, said they ate vanilla ice cream, and that's all he said about that conversation. And so, in the movie, this is uh, Regina King's first, uh, I believe, her first uh, directing of a major of a of a motion picture. Um, I thought it was absolutely amazing. Uh, so I definitely check it out. It's, it's just overall, it's, it, it's kind of a timely, uh, uh, message in it, you know, with everything that's going on with, uh, you know, kind of this, the, the so-called racial reckoning that we are having. Um, uh, but I just think it's, it shows, it shows four, uh, very affluent black men, in a positive light. And I really like that. Um, even though there is some kind of dark undertone because it's not too long, um, until, uh, until, uh, Malcolm X was assassinated after that. But, um, overall the message of the movie is great Four phenomenal actors in the film. Um, most of them I've, I've never even heard of. The only one that I do know, uh, is, uh, Leslie Odom from uh, Hamilton fame. Um, everybody else is, is, fairly new if I, cause I had never heard of them, but Regina, G Regina King did a phenomenal job uh, with directing this film. It, it's, it's one to check out. It's on, that's on Amazon prime. Uh, you can watch that, uh, which also actually brings up uh, the other film that's on Amazon prime, which is coming to America, which I finally, I was so coming excited. To yeah, coming to America. And I was so excited about that film. So um, definitely check that one out. I mean, it, they, all the same characters. They pretty much brought everybody back uh, for this one, which... Dan Aykroyd? Uh, no, no Dan Aykroyd. But, uh, but Louis Anderson's in there. <laughs> um, but yeah, James... Um, uh, J uh, what's, I can't even remember his name right now. Uh, James Earl no, Jones? James Earl Jones. Yeah, I, could, I was like, why am I blanking on his name? Uh, James Earl Jones is back, um, like, and pretty much like the entire cast from the original film, uh, and then uh, introducing some new characters. Of course, the very funny Tracy Morgan and um, Les, uh, Leslie Jones are in this film as well. So check that one out. That's also on Amazon Prime. So um, I don't think we're going to be able to get to our other ones today, but we can yeah, we'll definitely have to, get to those next week. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Because I definitely want to talk about those. Um, but yeah, so, so a couple as things we wind coming down out. here, uh, I do got to make sure that I put out there uh, starting tomorrow morning, you'll be able to go back and re-listen to this broadcast as a podcast where you can listen to it through Anchor, Breaker, Google Podcast, Radio Public, or Spotify. Please do. Um, you know, your support is immensely important to us. Um, also, be on the lookout for the video of this broadcast. I should have it up sometime later this weekend. Um, so 
you know, we, uh, we definitely enjoy what we're doing. We hope you enjoy watching and listening uh, to us. And by all means, if you have ideas, thoughts, um, send them our way, you know, go to, uh, go to fat and black connection on Facebook. Um, you know, send us some messages. Let us know what you're thinking about the show, what you'd like to see us talk about. Um, we always, uh, appreciate feedback. Yeah, no, thank you guys for, for tuning in and, and leaving comments. We appreciate that. Absolutely. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and shut it down. So, uh, hope you've enjoyed and uh, we'll look forward to talking to you next week. Shut it down. <laughs> Take care guys.